Let's see. All right. All right, we're live with Mossy Oak Kennels in West Point, Mississippi. Uh, my name is Riley Pierce, and this is Mr. Bill Gibson. All right, Mr. Bill, can you tell us what we're doing today? We're going to show a little bit of uh, how to select a puppy. We're going to show you a puppy that's basically a little started puppy. Not finished by a long shot, but a little started puppy. After that, then we're going to move into to preparing your dog for the upcoming hunting season and keeping him in shape during the off season. Okay, good deal. All right, you wanna you wanna show some puppies? Walk yes, in and sure. show some puppies. We go in our whipping house here. This is where all our puppies are whipped. We have two litters in here right now. We just look at one. Let's see. You wanna do this one? Yeah, let's do that one. Come on, babies. <laughs> what I look for in a puppy is you'll notice that these puppies, when I call them, they come in and they start staring at me, looking up. And when I talk to them, they'll lick their mouth, their mouth and they'll get, hey baby, come here. <laughs> Here's that little puppy, good girl, yes, yeah, sure. What I look for in a puppy is tail position. You'll notice that most of them have their tail kind of in a center position. It's not too high, it's not too low, they're not overly dominant, they're not overly, overly submissive. When we call them, they come, and if I stick my hand out, you'll see all I'm gonna lick my hand. It's just, uh, and that's what I basically look for in a puppy, is tail position, whether or not they lick when they're young like that. Okay, they all want to be picked up. And they all want to be picked up. They, they're very attentive to humans. And when you have that in a litter, you've got a pretty good litter. Yeah. You ready? All right, let's, let's walk outside and work an older dog real quick. Okay. They're being quiet today. Where's Harvey? Oh, he's on the porch. We gotta grab him up. Grab him off the porch. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so what are we doing next? We're gonna do a little blind retrieve for Harvey, and then we're gonna move on to uh, a little steadiness drill. Well, we're going to start the steadiness drill with the young puppy to show how we started that puppy, how steady it is at four and a half months. And then we'll come back to Harvey and probably boss on a uh, honoring situation. Can you t tell me why, why, why is steadiness so important to you? Steadiness to me is one of the most important things in gun dog training. And it all goes to the duck blind. When you get to the duck blind, you want a dog that sits and watches for the ducks. When it sees the duck, all you gotta do is watch your dog. You'll know the ducks are in the air. It's not barking, it's not whining, it's not running up and down the blind, knocking shotguns over and interfering with the other hunters in the blind. And when you when you get to that point, but most especially, it's not breaking when a gun goes off. It's steady to shot and fall, only goes when it's sent. Okay. And that's very, very, very important. Okay. We got another little puppy. That's Millie. <laughs> yeah. Alright, you wanna start you wanna start with the puppy or you wanna start with the with the let's blind? Start with the little puppy. Okay, let's walk out to where we can get in the open a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't know who to heal heal with. Hey buddy. I'm gonna step away from Acting up. <laughs> he would wait till we're, we're live to mess yeah. up. Yeah. Come here, Harvey. Come on. I'm gonna work him first. Him yeah, up. grab. Give him. Let me see that dummy from you. 
Mark Harvey on a few blinds, kind of build him up, take a little of the yeah. fat off of him that he's gained since he's been in hunt season. He's, he duck hunted in Arkansas this year. But we've got some blind retrieves, and so we're just going to send him out, let him get some good exercise, let him uh, sit around, be steady for a minute, and then we're going to send him. Get out. These are actual blinds. He does not know that the dummies are out there. We set the dummies out about a half hour ago and just bring him out to do a few retrieves. We set a couple of whites and then an orange. So why do you put the orange one last? Because it's uh, been rumored and probably proved many times that a dog can't see orange out there in the grass. So. The, he can see the whites when he gets up there, but he can't see the orange, so he's gonna have to look for it just a little bit, a little harder. How old are most puppies when you start training them? About six, seven weeks when we first start. And the way we, the way we start them on steadiness is with the food bowl. We fill the food bowl up with food, with food get our scent, human scent on it. Here, buddy. Yeah. Sit. And uh, after that, we hold the food bowl up, have the puppy sit, ease the food bowl down. If the puppy moves toward it, we raise it back up and ease it down again until the puppy stays right there, steady, and there's only the puppy's only allowed to eat when we say okay. Mr. Bill, how long have you been training dogs? Basically since I was a teenager. For other people, probably five or 10 years, a little longer, maybe 15. But I trained my own for a long time. That's it. You notice I had to handle him just a little bit on that one because it's orange and obviously you're not gonna see it. It's a true blind, one handle. That's about uh, 150, 200 yards. Yeah, at least. Yeah. But he's one of our finished dogs. He's really, really a nice dog. Yeah. Good. Good. Now we run him. We'll let him cool off a minute. While he's cooling off, we'll work the little pup a bit. All right. You ready? Pretty steady, she is. How old is Millie? She's four and a half months. Four and a half months. Watch. Millie. She loves it. Good girl. Here. Here. Good, Millie. Here. Yeah. 
<laughs> we'll try one more, sir. And remember, this is to more demonstrate uh, her steadiness and his honoring. He's honoring her. I was about to say, so this is this is good, just as much good for him than it is for her. That's very true, especially in the off season when they get a little rusty. Yeah. You need to tune them back up to keep them in shape all during the off season, not just go out the first day of duck season and expect them to work in a exactly. special manner. Watch, Millie. Good girl, here. Ooh. Here. Uh oh. Victory lap. Got a brag. You bragging? Huh? Come on. Here. No. I got to show that black dog. <laughs> My dummy. Here. They all wait till they get on television to come here, buddy. Good girl, good girl, Millie. We'll do one more. We've done two marks with her now. We'll do a trailer memory. You good? Why don't you take that? A trailer memory is no more than walking the dog out, dropping the dummy, walking the dog back, and then sending the dog for it. Millie, feel. Mr. Bill, can you explain why you, why you fell in love, I guess I should say, with British Labs? Well, back many years ago, I bought my first British Lab, and it was very calm in the blind. It was steady to shot and fall. It never broke. It never bothered anybody in the blind. It never whined. It never barked. It handled really well. It took uh, lefts, rights, backs, whatever you told it to do, it would do it. And I just fell in love with them, and then I, I trained that dog for a good while, and I went to uh, Northern Ireland in 2004 and ran some working tests over there with the U.S. gun dog team, and as a result of that, we Sorry. won the uh, Irish International and the Atlantic Cup as a team, and my dog was a heavy contributor, and I just, I, I just fell in love with, with the U.K., in Republic of Ireland, enjoyed my business over there, and I just like British Lab because of their demeanor, their biddability, and their trainability. Like all of that. Millie. Now this is a this is a trailer memory where he walked out the pub, dropped the dummy, and walked back. And what this Here. does is it increases their memory, as opposed to just marking. He never moved. My boy never moves, do you, buddy? <laughs> they had to get used to that puppy just a little bit, though. So that puppy jumps on me, yeah. Okay. Um, you want to walk down and, and shoot him some? Yeah. Okay. Wait. Well, he, he's he's going to get boss for us. Okay. Um, We're going to So, I had, a, yeah, I had a question that says... Um, do you prefer to train, or is one easy, one gender easier to train than the other? Not really. Uh, the, the females seem to mature a little faster than the males. Other than that, I don't see any difference in them, other than the, the male likes to mark his territory, and the female comes into season twice a year. And other than that, I see no real difference in them. I have more females than I have males. But. All right. Um, I had a comment that says, any suggestions on how to work with a dog that has a hard mouth? Ooh, that's a tough one. It's hard to deal with. That situation sometimes. You can do any number of things if it's hard mouthing on a bird. I used to in my old days, if I put a few nails to the bird dog.
hit on them so he chomped down or she couldn't chomp down on them and throw the bird, let them retrieve. And after a while, after a couple of chomps on that, they're not going to be chewing anymore. What about, have you heard um, the tennis balls with like the steel in the middle of them? That's, it's real hard when they bite down. Do you think something like that would work? Probably so. Uh, anything that, that they don't get any pleasure out of biting down on it, like a bird, you know, with soft tissue, feathers, that encourages the bite. A lot of times it's caused because you started the dog on feathers too early in its career. So, okay. there are many ways, like somebody said one time, there are a thousand ways to skin a cat. There are a thousand ways to train a dog. None of them are really right or really, really wrong. It's kind of a personal preference and what you intend to use the dog for. I got you. Any more questions come up yet? Yeah. Um, so in the summer, you know, it's hot outside. And we're starting, you know, we're running up on in, in the summer. It's about yeah. to get really hot, especially down here in Mississippi. How long do you train a dog each day? How, do you, how can you tell? Is there, I mean. On a, on a really hot day. I train maybe 15 minutes, but what I look for is the end of the tongue turning red. When the end of that tongue turns red, it's time to quit. Because one thing you don't want to do, you don't want to risk a heat stroke. A heat stroke is almost impossible for the dog to recover from. Once they have one, they generally have more than one as, they, as you progress. They just can't, they can't tolerate the heat anymore. See. We're coming up on our launcher here. Let me get out of the way. Here's your remote, Mr. Bill. Thank you. Come here. We kind of let him run around a bit. Relax. Harvey. Here. <laughs> they smell the. They smell rabbits. Yeah. Go up under this fence. They're they're everywhere. We have a. A lot of rabbits here, <laughs> but in the fenced here, and when they, I don't know whether people are aware of it or not, but in England, in a, in, well, the UK, when they have a uh, field trial, they shoot rabbits during the field trial, and your dog is expected to retrieve a rabbit just like it is a bird. So, these dogs genetically, I guess, are wired to retrieve rabbits. They don't chase them, but they will retrieve them. And when they smell them, they kind of turn on the rabbit trail there a bit. What about, all right, so if you have a dog who drops or he say he goes out and, and gets a dummy, picks it up, picks up a bird, whatever he's retrieving, and on the way back or, you know, once he gets back to you, drops the dummy or whatever he's holding, what do you do to fix that? We, we have several different things that we do to fix that. One of them is a place stand that's off the ground. Have them do it when they get through with their retrieve, come back to the place stand. Seems like when they get off the ground, they have, they hold better. If, if that does not do the trick, then we move them to a table and we do condition hold. When we tell them to hold, put the dummy in their mouth, put our thumb in the V of their chin, rub them on the back of the head, good boy, good boy, good girl, good girl, whatever. And uh, after about uh, three or four, five days, they get to where they hold a heck of a lot better and it progresses as you go along. And if that doesn't work, then you got to get, get them on the whole table for a longer period of time, cut out all retrieves until they learn how to hold. Because every time they drop it, all you're doing is reinforcing a drop. You're not teaching them to hold, you're actually teaching them to drop. So you want to suspend all retrieving at that time and work strictly on hold till you get it to the point that you want it at and then go back to retrieving. All right, good deal. Hey, boss man. Hey, boss man. Yeah. Come on, buddy. Heel. Sit. All right, so, Mr. Bill, we're going to use two fully trained labs at the same time. No, boss. Come here. No, come here. Heel. Sit. Can you explain to our viewers why we're going to use two dogs and why is, that, why is that important? Number one, it's important to expand on steadiness. So steadiness to shot and fall, and it's also an honoring drill, so that one dog honors the other dog and both of them don't go at the same time. We teach our dog a duality release, which is name and snap of the finger, so that 
you know, what's the odds of having a dog by the same name and a dog blind at the same time? You can tell, you can send him by name, you can send him by get out, you can send him by get over, but we use the name when we have two dogs out. That way we don't have, when one goes, both go. Here you go, will you hold this? Yeah. So I can work him. Come here, boss. Here, buddy. Here. We switched sides there, and Harvey wanted to stay on the same side, but he's okay. You ready? blow two or three times, four times on the whistle. That's the come here command. The whistle is used for two basic commands. Stop and look and come here. I was making sure he got the one on the left that fast. So I stopped him one blow of the whistle and gave him a over. Harvey. Yep, good boy. Yep. Yeah. Get on. Good. Good. Come on. He's got a real soft man. I know. Come on. Come on. Boss has a real small mouth, and the way you can toughen that up some is take a hard plastic dummy or a training book 
have him hold it and wiggle it up and down so that he clamps on it a little harder. But he's always had a soft mouth. He's like his mother. She has a real soft mouth. That's why he drops dummies. I've never seen him drop a duck or a dove or any other kind of bird, pheasant or whatever. But he will drop a dummy every now and then on the way back. Simply. <laughs> but he is a nice dog. And old Harvey is a nice dog. You can take that back. We got any questions on yeah, I was to see if we had any good comments. Um, so Brandon Chu wants to know what determines what side your dog heals on. Personal choice. The way he has been trained. If you want him to train on the right, you put him on the right. If you want him to heal on the left, you put him on the left. But there's a trick to that. In early training like that, you uh, use a uh, slip lead. The slip lead has to, if you're working on the left side, the slip lead has to go on like a P. You turn the slip lead till it looks like a P, and then you slip it straight over the dog's head. If you're going to work on the right side, you turn the slip lead till the circle looks like a Q, and you slip it over his head. Then it works on the uh, right side. Let me, let me give a demonstration there of what I'm talking about. Okay, this would be like a P. Go straight over the dog's head. If you got it like a pee and you put it over the dog's head and you correct him, you'll notice you get instant release on it. If you put it like a cue and you're working on the left side, you get an instant lock. The dog's not learning anything because it's keeping constant pressure. It's not releasing unless you reach down and release it. The same thing if you want him on the right, then you turn it where it looks like a cue, pull up on it, you get an instant release. And uh, that's so the it's basics just, of, of using a, a lead like such as this, a British lead. So it's just per personal preference as far as... Personal preference does it, so as far as which side they work yeah. on. And you can have them work on both sides, you know, if that's your preference. It's not going to have any real effect on your training or anything else, just a personal preference. Most people that carry the gun in the right hand want their dog on the left side. All right. Um, what's the general? Generally, like, what is the timeline for training puppies from start to finish? We we like to start them here, coming from third parties. We like to start them at six months, and depending on the dog, it can take anywhere from one month of basic obedience to two months. It can even move on to. Uh, Started dog training, that's going to take another month or two. The uh, finished dog training is going to take more. We call it level one, level two, level three, and level four. It can take anywhere from four months to eight months. You just don't know. It depends on the dog, how fast the dog learns, and how fast he's ready to progress. Because if you don't build a good, solid foundation, just like any building, it's going to crumble somewhere down the line. Then you're going to be in trouble. All right, uh, we'll, we're gonna answer one more question. How do you how do you stop a, a dog from jumping on people? Like as a puppy, if you have a puppy, how do you keep him from jumping on you and, and clawing on you and jumping on the furniture? How do you? I, I mean, I, I, it's hard to ask that question because there's so many different things that That's go right. into that. But a lot of different things. Yeah. The, the basic of it is is if it jumps up on me, I just bump it with my knee and tell it no in a low voice. I don't say no, yeah. because the dog is gonna confuse that with good boy, good boy. As my kennel cleaner does, he's got a high voice naturally. And uh, so he has to purpose to get his voice down like no, and then just bump it. Don't kick it, bump it. And about uh, a day, two days, three days, that dog's gonna know. If I jump up on him, I'm gonna get it. Yeah. All right, um, I think that's about it. Guys, we appreciate y'all hanging out with us. Uh, it's been fun. Um, and don't forget, um, at the end of this video, swipe if you know, swipe up is a hard, the country's going through a difficult time. Um, swipe up to donate to Feeding America. Um, it'll help a lot of people out. Um, and we really appreciate it, and thank you very much.